Hello everyone and welcome back to today's showcase on Dark Souls 3. So, we've gone through a lot of weapons so far. Almost 60 of them. God, there's so many weapons in this damn game. <laughs> More than any other Dark Souls. Fun. Anyway, for today's item, I want to look at another Reaper. One that's actually historically accurate. It's always nice when I find those weapons. They always tickle my funny bone, in a way. <laughs> I do love that. But, however, this weapon is a bit different from the other Reapers. It's not only a thrusting weapon, but a slashing one as well. If you deducted that, we're talking about the Estoc. The Estoc is uh, pretty much the balance between a sword and a Reaper. Mind you, it's still a Reaper by nature. But still, it could slash. Not only but jab. <laughs> but yes, it's a very common Reaper. Anyway, the description reads, A large thrusting sword used for piercing through armor of knights. The sharp edge of the sword's rock-solid blade can also be used in slashing attacks. The skill is the Shield Shatter. We haven't seen that since the, uh, about the mail, about mail Breaker, I think it was called. One of the very first weapons I did. Aim carefully and attack a large forward lunge to pierce through enemy shield and inflict damage directly. But yes, most conventional shields made with thinner metal, or wood, would be pierced by this weapon. Quite deadly indeed. But yes, it's not very many weapons have the shield shatter. You'll have that, you have the plane spears I remember now, that one had it. And this weapon. And I think there might be one more in somewhere in the catalog of weapons. So in total only four weapons have this sh the shield splitter skill. Mind you, some weapons bypass the shield altogether still, but no less, this weapon claims it could do right through it. We'll test on the Cathedral Knight and also the Gargoyle. The Dark Knight doesn't often use his shield, so probably not him. <laughs> but otherwise, it's still very very interesting that a, such a thin little blade won't shatter when striking a shield. Now, going on to appearance, this s -talk, well, it's historically accurate. The s -talk pretty much looks the very same. It's a thin blade tape going to very, well, a very even taper going to the very end to a very fine point. These weapons are very light, you can swing them around, and they're used in the more Victorian era. Not so much in warfare. Even though it does puncture about blight armor and shields, it was useful for going in between the metal plates of armor. And after that, eventually it was becoming a fencing sword, used in various duels and such. Interesting, but yes, points for historical accuracy. Looking at the stats, you can see the physical is no different from a plain sword. Then again, you get this mildly early in the game. Pretty much in the first third of your playthrough. So it's no surprise there. Bonus damage, not too bad. It's average. Moving on from that, we got the tree of bonus. We got two Ds. Chances be the dexterity will probably turn to a C, then the strength. That's also reflected in the tribute requirement. We got 10 strength and 12 dexterity in order to wield this. Not too much. Very little to ask for. Then finally, we're moving on to the Shield Splitter. Shield Splitter cousin caused a whole lot of FP, only 14. Pretty cheap. And the weight of the weapon's also low at 3.5, which is like nothing at all. Lighter than most blades. <laughs> so all in all, pretty good stats. For the animations, the basic attack is the Repair Thrust, sure with all Repairs. Power attack, however, is a Swipe, sure with only this weapon. Now, the two-handed basic attack is the two-handed thrust, shared with all reapers. And the two-handed power attack is a heavy swipe, shared with only the s -talk. Now, we got the special move, the shield splitter. It's a quick forward lunge. Could be useful, we'll see. And the sprint attack is pretty much a quick swipe and step. However, this also changes your kick animation. Interesting. So going on to the upgrade, as we can see this, the S-Talk takes a plain old-fashioned Tate Knight Shard. Nothing special there, but we can see immediately in the first upgrade, the Atreo Bonus goes from a D to a C. So that's nice. Right out, the, right out the front door like that. We can see going forward, it's pretty much an average upgrade. So. Yep, we can see that fairly good. Acceptable. Now for performance... Well, the weapon is a repair, so it's quick, it's nimble, but it cannot, well, 
it's not in terms of horrible, like, it's not a super length. But the backstab does plenty of damage, 344. Just fine. The swipe does dramatically less at 260, but that's still plenty. This weapon is kind of like the idea between the balance of firepower and DPS compared to most repairs, where most repairs focus on DPS. This one kind of leans on the more physical side. You can see the, well, the attack for the backward swipe is not that great, but oh well. So, now we'll do a power attack, we can see there. Now let's try this shield splitter, of course. This guy's not going to want to use his shield, is he? But no matter. When he uses his shield, I'll make sure to thrust in. Nope, two-handed, and let's see. 214 to bypass that shield altogether. Isn't that something? So, don't have to worry about his shield at all, will we? Moving on to the Gorgile. I will try to test it against his shield, but we shall see what the outcome may be. I don't expect a whole lot. His shield is unorthodox and it's large. Now, I keep forgetting. I take the target shield for aesthetics, but I don't need it. So there we go. It does puncture slightly, but only 100 damage or so. So that's not the best, but hey, most weapons do almost no damage when trying to get through. So overall, pretty good. Moving on to the Black Knight. These guys, I will not be testing the shield puncture ability because they almost never use that shield, and when they do, it's only for a very short window. They are not very defensive at all. In fact, I'd say that shield is just for looks only. <laughs> now, I didn't try the uh, ricochet move yet, so I'll attempt it on this, even though I'm horrible at parrying. I'm a dodger. <laughs> but nonetheless. He's about easier said than done, though, for parrying. But, there we go. And we see here, 419, which is plenty of damage. So overall, pretty solid weapon. Is it the best repair? Probably not. But it's probably the most balanced one between strength and dexterity. Moving on to the pros and cons of the S-Stock. On the pro side, you obviously got that shield splitter move that punctures shields. So, shield piercer. Also, the weapon's incredibly nimble. Very quick. And on top of that, you do have a bunch of unique animations with it. Since you have, this weapon has a lot of animations unique only to it. A lot, actually. On the con side, the damage, eh, it's okay. Mediocre damage. And in terms of DPS, it isn't that great for DPS either. The basic attack is okay, but it's still very weak. The DPS isn't nearly as quick as the other ray pairs. But that's the only two cons I can really see. Moving on to the score for the S-Talk. Damage gets 4 out of 10. It was a little mediocre, but still solid enough. Reach though gets 6 out of 10 for being a little bit longer than a longsword. Animation gets 8 out of 10 for almost all the unique animations aside from the basic attacks. Bonus gets 6 out of 10. It was okay. A little bit it's, it's very a hair above average. Miscellaneous gets 7 out of 10 for that shield puncturing special and the all the really unique animations and how we can get this pretty early in the game. So total, Zestok gets 31 out of 50, which is pretty good. The damage may have been on the lower side, but I think everything else makes up for it. It's still a fairly easy weapon to use. You get it pretty early in the game and has low requirements. Still a solid weapon to choose. It is a more elegant weapon for a more civilized era. <laughs> Well, maybe not, by, maybe not that much more civilized, but yeah, you get the idea. <laughs> but yeah, it's a fairly solid weapon. Probably not for everyone, though. Because in terms of other weapons, it does... Many other weapons will outshine it in terms of damage, but still. Fairly solid weapon that you can use. And your opponent loves to use shields? Well, you know exactly what to do with this weapon. <laughs> but no matter. That's been today's showcase. I thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care out there.